On this edition of Algebra is Awesome, Why Isn't Everyone Doing It?, we're going to be talking about the binomial theorem. Um, and we're going to learn about um, expanding more complex binomials. So we're going to be answering the question, how can we expand complicated polynomials using uh, Pascal's triangle? And then we're going to expand using Pascal's triangle. We're also going to use the binomial theorem to expand more complicated binomials. So... Uh, to get started, we're going to go over our vocabulary. I've got three words for you. To expand a polynomial is to multiply it out and then write it in standard form. So like x plus 2 squared, you would use the FOIL method to multiply x plus 2 times x plus 2. And that's expanding. Pascal's triangle was named for a French mathematician, Blaise Pascal. And it is a triangle array of numbers in which the first and the last number in each row is a 1. Um, I'm going to show it to you in a minute, we're going to use it. And the binomial theorem gives a general formula for expanding binomials. And the binomial theorem uses Pascal's triangle. So we're going to learn about Pascal's triangle first. Um, so, expanded form, so if we take a plus b to the 0 power, um, do you remember anything times 0 is 1? So we get 1 as our answer, so our coefficient is 1 a plus b to the first is just times 1 itself. Um, so there's 1a b plus, or 1a plus 1b. Now a plus b squared, this is where the FOIL method comes in. So we do our first a squared outer plus a b inner plus b a last plus b squared. Now Remember, we always write our terms in alphabetical order. So this is 1ab plus 1ab. That makes a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So that's what you get right here. So your coefficients are 1, 2, 1. a plus b cubed, you just take this a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, and you multiply times a plus b again. So you multiply a times everything, multiply b times everything, you get, let's see, a cubed plus 2a squared b plus a b squared plus a squared b plus 2a b squared plus b cubed. You combine your like terms, um, a squared b and a squared b, and then a b squared a b squared. You get a squared plus 3a squared b plus 3 a b squared plus b cubed. That's how you got this here. And then you multiply it again, and you'll get this one. So that's what expanded form means. It just means to multiply everything out. So in Pascal's triangle, he just took all these coefficients, and he kind of made them into a triangle. So you see there's ones all down the left side, ones all down the right side. And then he filled it in. 2, 3, 3. If you keep going, it's 4, 6, 4. And then it's 5, 10, 10, 5. And if you notice, each row um, is adding the two coefficients above it. So 5 comes from 4 plus 1. 10 comes from 4 plus 6. 10 comes from 6 plus 4. And 5 comes from 4 plus 1. So you can do that all the way down. Like these are all numbers that are added together from the two coefficients that are above it. So these are the coefficients of a plus b to the n power, and I already said this, you can see that. Pretty cool, huh? Alright, so what is the expansion of a plus b to the 6th power using Pascal's triangle? So here's the triangle. So look for that row to the 6th power is row 6. So we take, um, and each time, um, if you noticed before, so we start with a is to the 6th power, b is to the 0. A is to the first power, B is to the fifth power. The, the powers always add up to 6, whatever your coefficient is. And then it's always 1 less A, 1 more B each time. So when we take that 6th row there, the 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1, you get 1, A to the 6th, B to the 0, 6, A to the 5th, B to the 1st, 15, A to the 4th, B to the 2nd, 20, A cubed, B cubed, 15, a squared, b to the fourth. So you see a's are getting smaller each time, b's are getting greater each time. We're still using the coefficients from the triangle. Uh, 15, a squared, b to the fourth. 6, a to the first, b to the fifth. 
and 1, a to the 0, b to the 6th. And then you just take it and simplify. b to the 0 is always 1. We don't need a coefficient of 1, so we take it out and we write that as a to the 6th. So we write each one, you get a to the 6th plus 6a to the 5th b plus 15a to the 4th b squared plus 20a cubed b cubed plus 15a squared b to the 4th plus 6ab to the 5th plus b to the 6th. So that is a plus b to the 6th expand, excuse me, expanded all the way out. So you can see how that works. All right, I want you to go ahead and pause the video, and I want you to write out what a plus b raised to the 8th power is. Okay, go ahead and pause. Use your Pascal's triangle to rewrite it up. All right, so you should have gotten a to the 8th plus 8... Um, a to the 7th b plus 28 a to the 6th b squared plus 56 a to the 5th b cubed plus 70 a to the 4th b to the 4th plus 56 a cubed b to the 5th plus 28 a squared b to the 6th plus 8 a b to the 7th plus b to the 8th. And that comes all from these coefficients right here. <coughs> so Pascal's triangle, pretty easy to um, create, pretty easy to use. All right, now the binomial theorem is just basically a long, complicated way to say that you use Pascal's triangle and you use your powers, and so you start with a to the power, you end with b to the power, whatever. So when you use the binomial theorem to expand x minus 2 to the fourth power, a is your x value and b is your negative 2, so that plus negative 2. Um, remember also when you're using this that if you have a value in front of your x, a becomes 3x. So when you raise that to a power, so a to the fourth power, you're raising the whole quantity 3x to the fourth power. So what that means is you're also multiplying the 3 to the fourth power, not just the x. All right, so we're going to expand this 3x minus 2 raised to the fifth power and use the binomial theorem. So I'm going to rewrite it as instead of 3x minus 2, 3x plus negative 2, just so we remember that our b is negative 2. And I'm going to pull up Pascal's triangle so we can look at it. So the fifth row, you can see the coefficients are 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, and 1. So what we do is kind of the same thing that we did before, except we use the whole value of a. So 1 times 3x to the fifth power plus 5 times 3x to the 4th power, negative 2 to the 1st power, plus 10 times 3x to the 3rd power, negative 2 to the 2nd power, plus 10 times 3x to the 2nd power, times negative 2 to the 3rd power, plus 5 times 3x to the 1st power, times negative 2 to the 4th power, plus 1 times negative 2 to the 5th power. So now, in order to write this, we have to um, take and multiply everything. So we need to take and multiply 3x to the 5th power. So that's 3 to the 5th power, x to the 5th power. And 3 raised to the 5th power is 243, x to the 5th. Now, for this one, um, I need to multiply. Remember, exponents always go first. So I do this one, and I do this one. So I have 3 to the 4th power, <clears throat> which is 81, but I also need to multiply that to the 5. So I have um, 5 times 81 x to the 4th power times negative 2. So I could just 81 times 5 is 405 x to the 4th times negative 2. Multiply that, and I get negative 810 x to the 4th power. So remember, we're multiplying everything. Okay, so this one, negative 2 squared is 4, um, 3 to the 3rd power is 27, and 27 times 10 is 270, and 270 times 4 is 1080, and my x is to the 3rd power. Okay, negative 2 to the 3rd power, negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, positive 4 times negative 2 is negative 8. So Odd exponents still have a negative value. This is 9, so 10 times 9 is 90, and 90 times negative 8 is negative 720, and my x is squared. Now I have negative 2 to the fourth power. This is positive 16 
So 16 um, times 3 times 5, that makes 240x. My x is now to the first power. And then uh, negative 2 to the fifth power, we multiply 16 times negative 2 and get negative 32. So that is using the binomial theorem to find out um, if there's a value here instead of just like when we did Pascal's triangle, it was like a plus b or x plus y. Those are your most common ones. So your binomial theorem. Whew. So your binomial theorem also uses a value as your second term instead of just variables. <clears throat> All right, here's your lesson check. I want you to use Pascal's triangle and the binomial theorem to expand these two. And then I want you to explain why you cannot use the same method to expand um, x squared minus 3x minus 4 all raised to the third power. This is what you're going to discuss with your partner first, and I want to see discussion on Monday. All right, so have a great weekend, and see you at school. Don't forget to do your homework. Okay, bye.